Good afternoon, boys and girls. A very interesting book here today. What are wheels? And boys and girls, it tells us all about um the different types of wheels and the categories of wheels that they are or that that we have. So we're going to learn today about two uh, types of wheels. Wheels are mammals, the only mammals to live entirely in water. About the wheel's blowhole, about the pod, that's a group of wheels, how wheels communicate and locate their food, the wheel's ancestors, and why are wheels just so interesting. And we'll look a little bit about wheel watching and then come across the glossary in different terms. So the two types of wheels, boys and girls. Wheels are creatures that have fascinated humans for centuries. There are two types of wheels. These, uh, th these are toothed wheels and balling wheels. Toothed wheels eat fish and squid. They use echolocation to find their food. Sperm wheels and pilot wheels are types of toothed wheels. So are dolphins and porpoises. So dolphins also, boys and girls there, um, have teeth, as you can see. Uh, balling wheels eat krill. And there's a little example there of the krill, boys and girls. These are small creatures that are like shrimp or prawns. And the wheels strain the krill through their balling plates and uh, separate the krill from the seawater. And balling wheels need large amounts of krill to survive. Humpback wheels and right wheels are types of balling wheels. And here's a big balling here. As you can see, it soaks it up and through its mouth and pulls the krill apart from the seawater. Um, and the pictures are quite bright here under the light, but I hope you can see that, boys and girls. Now, whales are mammals. And whales are mammals. This means they are warm-blooded creatures. They feed their young milk. And here is a whale underwater and its little out beside it there, boys and girls, swimming alongside mum. Very hard to see because of the blue. Now, most large whales feed in the Arctic and Antarctic waters. It's cold there even in summer. They have thick layers of fat called blubber that helps keep them warm. Whales move to warmer waters to mate and to give birth to their calves. So here is another great whale there swimming along with its little calf. And here they are up in the Arctic waters by the huge, huge mountains of ice and sea. The only mammals to live entirely in water Whales and their relatives, dolphins and porpoises, belong to the same mammal order. They are the only mammals to live their whole lives in water. Humpback whales, look at the length of that, boys and girls. Humpback whales and right whales are large. But the blue whale, there it is in the picture, is the largest mammal ever to have lived on earth. The ocean is the only place such large mammals can live. The water makes them buoyant and buoyant means it pushes them up and it supports their heavy weight. The whale's blowhole. Let's learn a little bit about that now boys and girls. So the, the whale's blowhole, um, whales breathe as other mammals do. They do this through blowholes. You can see the blowhole here at the top, can't you, boys and girls? Toothed wheels have one blowhole. Balling wheels have two. The blowholes are on the top of their heads. And to breathe, the wheel comes to the surface. It takes a deep breath of air. Its blowhole closes when it goes underwater. When the wheel comes back to the surface, it lets out air. It has kept in its lungs. Then it takes another breath. Interesting, isn't it, boys and girls? Look at this one at moonlight. You can see all the spray coming up, out, up into the air. Let's see what this means. The wheel does not blow water out through its blowhole. It looks like that in the picture, doesn't it, boys and girls? 
but it does not blow water out through its blowhole, even though it might look lo like it does. The, it look um it might look as though it does. The air has been in the whale's lungs, and that has been warmed. And when the wheel breathes out, the warm air hits the cooler air outside and it turns into steam. So this is like steam that rises out of the pot when we're cooking. The pod. Look at them all together in their pod, boys and girls. The pod. Wheels like dolphins and porpoises tend to stay in groups. A family group of wheels is called a pod. So there's a pod. And each pod has a leader. The other members of the pod will follow their leader everywhere. So there they are, all following their leader. How wheels communicate and locate their food? Many scientists believe the wheels are very intelligent creatures because they communicate by making sounds. They can make a wide range of sounds. Humpback wheels string these sounds together. We call this a wheel song. A wheel song can last up to about 30 minutes. Wheels, though, boys and girls, have very poor eyesight. They have no sense of smell. They have, a, they have keen senses, though, of hearing and touch. Toothed wheels use sound to locate food. They use sound to sense their own location. They make a sound that is reflected off an object which causes an echo. Wheels can sense from an echo where the object is. This is called echo location. So it's now knows this orca killer wheel knows that the seal is there and he's coming to get him. The wheel's ancestors, scientists believe that ancestors of the wheel once lived on land and had four legs. These creatures lived in the Cretaceous period that was about 65 million years ago. Mm, there you go. This is how scientists think the ancestor of the wheel looked. What do you think, boys and girls? The skeleton of today's wheel still shows signs that it once had back limbs. See that, boys and girls? They definitely have back limbs from that skeleton. Why are wheels so interesting? Why do we find wheels so interesting? It could be their huge size. It could be that they're able to communicate. Scientists are examining wheels that have washed ashore and died. Look at the amount of them coming in and all got beached and stranded on the beach, boys and girls. Scientists are studying wheels and dolphins closely. They're trying to understand how they communicate. They're trying to understand why some wheels get stranded on beaches. Wheel watching. Well, have you ever seen a wheel in its natural habitat? The humpback wheel and the, uh, and the right wheel are two types of large, slow-swimming wheels that you might see. Humpback wheels have very long flippers. The humpback wheel is usually black with white splotches. The right wheel's head is big and lumpy. You would know that boy if you saw him, wouldn't you, boys and girls? That's called the right wheel's head is big and lumpy. And here you have it diving out of the water. Tips for, for wheel watching. It is safest to go wheel watching from the shore. The next best thing is to be in a boat that is a safe distance from the wheel. Getting too close to a wheel could frighten and disturb it. Keep at a distance. Keep, keeps Keeping at a distance keeps the wheel safe. So you can do it from land or you can do it from a boat. When Muncher Alma was in New Zealand, boys and girls, many years ago in 2004, I went wheel watching in a boat similar to that. And we did see a wheel and its big tail and flipper coming out of the sea. And it was amazing. So we're just going to go over the glossary of terms again. So an ancestor is obviously a distant relative from long ago. Balling plates is tough elastic fringe sheets that hang down on both sides of the balling wheel's mouth used to strain the krill. And if you're buoyant, you're able to float easily. 
and the Cretaceous period was a period of geological time when plants evolved and dinosaurs and other reptiles flourished approximately 65 million years ago. And echolocation means, uh, is a means of locating objects by the sound and the echo. And mammals are warm-blooded animals that breathe in air and feed their young milk. So there you go, boys and girls. Thank you. And that was all about what are whales.